Hey, boys, um, respect in the competition is what you play for, and this man has got it from everyone. 371 games, if you don't mind, and as we said earlier, in his 19th season, he's announced his retirement today. David Mundy from the Fremantle Footy Club being good enough to join us. Dave, from all of us here, congratulations on a magnificent career. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, it's been quite a journey and over 19 years, as you mentioned, so it's, uh, it's a pretty big day for us, to be honest. Talk us through the process of um, determining whether or not you're going to go on into your 20th year. Is it um, you sit down mutually, is family involved? How did you arrive at the decision? Yeah, it's kind of something, I guess, that I've been thinking about um, seriously for a number of years now, to be honest. Um, been on one-year contracts for quite a long time and in a rebuilding club, you're never sure when that might end. But... Um, uh, I guess the real catalyst for this year's decision came uh, just before Christmas. I destroyed my ankle in, a, in our last hit out before Christmas and um, I can remember thinking at the time if I'd really hurt myself, I'm a 36-year-old man, going to miss maybe a large portion of the season and, and that's pretty much it. So um, it turned out it wasn't too bad. I managed to get back for round one this year, but that certainly started the process. Um, and, yeah, as, as has been the case for a number of years now, it's pretty open dialogue between myself and the club and my family's obviously involved in that as well. So it um, hasn't been the easiest decision to come to, but now that it's here and that I've made it and that I've spoken to um, you know, friends and family in the football club, uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy and, and pretty content with the, with the decision. Uh, unashamedly, we, we think, you know, collectively, we was talking here in the ad break, your form has stood up really well. You threw the, if you threw the birth certificate out, you'd play on. If you, if you had a, a choice, would you play on? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm really, I'm really proud to be able to still really strongly contribute on game day in the 22. I've said that for many years going into new contracts that, um, you know, that's one of the, my biggest ones that I want to tick. And um, I've been thinking for a long time that I'd feel really guilty if I hung on and battled my way through a year um, and, you know, ended in, as a really broken, crippled old man. So um, to go out on top, I uh, find a great uh, deal of pleasure in yeah, well, you look far from broken and crippled, mate. I mean, you were in the coaches' votes on the weekend, which is, uh, you know, does it, now that you've made the decision, if you're able to come out and sort of dominate like you have been the last four or five weeks of the season, does it, is that the way you would want to go out? I mean, you just said then you wouldn't want to be sort of limping your way towards the finish line. Is that, is that the main reason? Yeah, certainly, as I said, if I'm going to finish, I'd like to finish going out, still contributing and still playing a really good brand of football. And I still certainly feel like I'm capable of that. And we've got a few weeks left of the regular season and hopefully a few more after that for the Fremantle Footy Club, which is really exciting. Dave, what, how have you played 370-odd games with the amount of travel you've done? Uh, I'm not too sure, Brown. I get this, asked this question a lot. Um, a lot. Um, there's been a whole lot of luck. There's been obviously a fair, fair amount of professionalism behind the scenes and recovery and pre preparing for seasons has, has obviously been a really large part of uh, my makeup in Fremantle for 19 years now. So um, I've been very lucky. I've been very fortunate to be surrounded by some great medical people as well that have really helped keep me upright in some pretty challenging times. But um, yeah, just kind of got on a roll and um, you know, all of that kind of preparation has just fed into each other, not missing games and seasons and pre-seasons. They all add up and, you know, become quite resilient. And just on your team, since the Melbourne win, really, down the MCG several weeks ago now, there's questions being asked about Fremantle's game, especially their ability to move it from end to end. How do you guys sit your game internally? Yeah, certainly. I think those questions are warranted and justified with our performances over the last few weeks in particular. Um, we, like a lot of other teams, are kind of scratching away trying to find our best mix and our best football. Uh, we spoke about it this morning. We feel like a large part of that is having a bit more self-belief and self-confidence in ourselves to attack the game and take it on. We, we feel like we're playing a little bit too safe at the moment and trying to um, you know, protect the ball a little bit. Uh, but this is also a group where... We're in a position we haven't been in in a little while where all of a sudden we have something to lose. So I think most of our issues and our problems at the moment are to do with mindset um, and I think they're really easily rectified. Now that you've made the decision, Dave, and this is a situation we, we've all been in, um, so, some of us might have been pushed, Gaz, were you? Certainly not. No, right. I was, uh, I was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you feel a little bit different already, knowing that, you know, the next time you, you, you play at the MCG, it might be the last time, you're going to do the last thing, you know, a number of times um, that you've done 
hundreds of times. Do you, do you feel that emotion already? Yeah, I do. And I've been thinking about, um, like, this week is our last scheduled game in Melbourne with, obviously, a lot of friends and family coming along. And you're right, you do start thinking about even just the mundane things being the last or one of the last times I get to lift weights in the gym or jump in the ice bars, which aren't that fun. But, um, yeah, they, those kind of things start, um, start playing on your mind a bit and start bobbing up. So um, I've got some strategies in place already where hopefully by the end of the week I can kind of dial back into what I need to do on game day and, and put in a good performance. All the crazy stats you will have heard, I would imagine, given you know, your frequent fly miles, how many times you got on a pool, that sort of stuff. You've played with every single Fremantle player that's played his 200th game. You've been with them. Yeah, and something uh, I'm, I'm really proud of, to be, to be honest. I can remember them all. Hopefully we'll have another one with Michael Walters approaching that mark really quickly. But, um, yeah, all those kind of stats. I've worn every iteration of the Fremantle Football Club jumper now with the 3D anchor on the weekend. Um, there's 32 of those, so um, obviously it just speaks to the longevity and, and the hist part of Fremantle's history that I've been a part of. Who's the best of them? Uh, I think Matthew Pavlich is the best of them that I've played with. He, what he did uh, was pretty phenomenal, all Australians all through, and to be able to move from a massive inside midfielder, to be honest, but to be able to move from inside mid to a key power forward and dominate games there as well, I think is uh, fairly rare. Still unfinished business, obviously, this year, Dave. But when the season's over, all said and done, what does David Money do next? You could just go sun yourself on Leighton Beach or stay involved at Clubland? What's next? Yeah, I'm not too sure, to be honest, Rue. I, um, I'm taking this time to just appreciate the moment and try and get the most out of the rest of the year. I'll be exploring those kind of opportunities as we go, but um, nothing set in concrete just yet. Uh... And what about Nathan Fife, your old uh, teammate down the midfield? He's going to be back to uh, help you out in the next few weeks? Yeah, he will be another couple of weeks away, I think. Um, obviously injuring his hamstring again last week, but um, hopefully he can get himself right and you know, be a part of our finals push. Hey, Dave, we are, as we said off the top, we, we're still sitting here, you know, we're talking in break, trying to get our head around the fact that you've, be, you've lo not only rolled up for 19 pre-seasons, but to travel from one side of the country to the other, it's just unimaginable. So, uh, ultimate respect from all of us. Uh, well done on a 371-game career to date, and hopefully it finishes with some finals footy for Freo. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Well done, Dave. Congratulations. Well done, mate. Great job. It is crazy stuff. Yeah. It is amazing. Well, not, not just the not just yeah. the length of the career, but the consi level of consistency. Like, it's it was a damn good it was a bit surprising this year, and I understand his reasons uh, this week. It was <laughs> I understand his reasons because you you, you know you want to go out maintaining that really strong level of performance, but uh, he just he wasn't showing any signs of slowing down. No.